All right, we are recording. And if you are here right now, we are talking about modern teacher and playlists. I'm not gonna teach you about play playlists because I think you've been learning about them. But if you needed time to check in or to ask questions, I'll kind of go through that um, assignment on modern teacher. Some of you are having trouble uploading. Some of you have um, things that you wanna know more about. So it's just a chance for you to check in. When I scheduled out the seven days, I'm like, they probably will need something. So that's what this is. It's something to help you with playlists. So um, let me see. The best way I think I'm going to do this is share my screen. So to do that, I'm going to click on start share screen, share my computer sound, optimize screen share, and pick Google Chrome. And let me go to our the slide deck for today. Is this it? Beginning playlist. No. Is this it? Learn landing pages. No. Wait a minute. Landing pages. Learning pages? Landing pages. Learn. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any questions before I get started? All right. So this morning we are going over landing pages for Modern Teacher. Um, hopefully I'll be able to clarify any questions that you have or if there's something that you'd like to be able to share or you wonder about, that's what this forum is for. And I'm hoping that we can talk about the platform, the Modern Teacher platform, Maybe. trying to navigate that. Um, how to get your link into your assignments. I've had a lot of people struggle with that. And then um, updates. I have, oh, talking about um, the link also for your landing page to put on the Mashpee page and then how the updates work when you make updates to your landing pages. For a second, I forgot why I wrote updates. <laughs> All right, so I have a video for you to watch. And it's funny, I watched this last night and I thought, huh, there's stuff in this video that either I've already taught or I've already shared or someone else has shared or I've shown it in a video already. But it is good review, but it also talks about a different way to use a landing page. And so that's why I thought I would share it with you. Plus, this background is a little bit different than some of the ones we're using. It has the three walls of the classroom, which is kind of cool. And it does have a Bitmoji in there, but I want to just stop and put it out there. You do not have to have a Bitmoji or an avatar in your landing page. You don't even have to have your landing page look like a room. I'm just sharing this with you because it's an, another idea, another perspective. It might trigger something in your brain to work with your landing page. So I am never showing these to you so that you can make one just like it. Comparison is the thief of joy. So don't compare yourself to what's, what's being shown to you. Compare yourself to where you were a couple of weeks ago. All right, so let me hit play. Let me hit play. There we go. I know there are some. Hi, this is Shar from Teach with Shar, and I wanted to do a quick tutorial for you guys on how to actually use your interactive Bitmoji classroom once it's all set up. This video is not a tutorial on how to actually make a Bitmoji classroom. This is a tutorial on how to actually use it once you've created it. So if you're looking for a tutorial on how to make a classroom like mine, um, I highly suggest joining the Facebook group Bitmoji Craze for Educators or looking up some YouTube tutorials. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with this video. Now, just some background information. Um, I teach a hybrid course for sixth graders. It is a math science class, but it is a STEM or STEAM class um, with a heavy concentration on math and science. And I have sixth graders and we also have iPads. So they don't have Chromebooks because they are sixth grade in my district is in the elementary school. So they have iPads and typically keyboards if we were on campus. The issue that I usually run into when using Google Slides at
There's no volume. He says, there's no volume. Okay. Oops. Well, now that I did that by mistake, it's funny, you can't be clicking around. Can all of you hear? Thumbs up if you can hear. No, none, some can. Some can't. All right. Let me go back. You can we, can hear hear, it we can hear you. All right. You can't hear the whatever's. The, you the can't video. hear the video. Let me just make sure. And I thought I did. You were screen sharing. Stop share. And if I go into share screen, and I want, yep, share your computer sound opt. Oh, I remember what it was. I needed to, um, I needed to change the, it's when I wear my ear pods. Give me a second. My apologies. Select a speaker. Let's see if this does it. Oh, I shared the whiteboard. <laughs> oh, and I snorted. Okay. Um, try again, Susie. That's all we can do is just try again. Share screen. It has my computer sound. Google Chrome. Share. I can close that. I don't know how that came up. And then I can go to, oh, that's Firefox. Go back to Chrome. Ratio. Oh my goodness. Screen sharing has stopped as the shared window is closed. All right, I'm sorry. Let me reboot myself here. And I don't mean reboot the computer, but I have somehow lost the, there it is. I couldn't find my internet. Oh. You have to be very patient with yourself during this, um, crazy time. So I am wanting to make sure I'm on landing pages. I'm back to my video. Go back to Zoom. Go back to share screen. Google Chrome. I have the little check boxes. All right, I'm going to hit play. If you can hear the girl talking in the video, I want you to put your thumbs up. If I hit play. Hi, this is Shar from Teach with Shar, and I wanted to do a quick tutorial for you guys on how to actually use your interactive Bitmoji classroom once it's all set up. This video is not a tutorial on how to actually make a Bitmoji classroom. This is a tutorial on how to actually use it once you've created. So if you're looking for a tutorial on how to make a classroom like mine, um, I highly suggest joining the Facebook group Bitmoji Craze for Educators or looking up some YouTube tutorials. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with this video. Now, just some background information. Um, I teach a hybrid course for sixth graders. It is a math science class, but it is a STEM or STEAM class. Um, with a heavy concentration on math and science. And I have sixth graders and we also have iPads. So they don't have Chromebooks because they are sixth grade in my district is in the elementary school. So they have iPads and 
typically keyboards if we were on campus. The issue that I usually run into when using Google Slides as any type of assignment, the students forget to actually open the document in Google Slides because we use Google Classroom. If they just click on the assignment, it'll open as like a PDF or a preview. And in order for them to actually interact with the Google Slide, it has to be opened in Google Slides. Sometimes when I use hyperlinks, they forget to go into presentation mode, which will activate the link or make the link um, easier for them to get to. This is how they would open the slide. And so by here, they would just go in and start randomly clicking things until they found a link. The issue with that is they'll be clicking so fast that they'll start moving things around and then they'll just mess up the entire thing. Now, typically I would use master slides to prevent them from moving things around that I don't want them to, but for the sake of time, I really didn't feel like doing master slides because while it's easy for me to do, it's very time consuming. So I didn't want to do that route. The only other way for them to interact with the links is they would need to be in presentation mode and they would just forget to do this. It's a lot of steps from Google Classroom because it'll open in that preview and then they have to open it into Google Slides and then find the presentation mode or presentation button and they would just get lost in the steps and forget to do all that. But as you can see, I can click on the icons that have links and it will open the web pages. Okay, so um, there's lots of links in this classroom for my students. And so that, it, it works, that method works. But like I said, there's always that student or group of students that forget to open present in presentation mode to access those links. So I'm gonna show you a quick way to bypass all of that you will need to go to file and then go to publish to web yes um let me it's, i've already published this so let me stop and show you again so file publish to web and then you're going to hit publish hit okay i highly recommend that you go down here and publish content and settings and select the link the reason being is uh, I'm not going to open it because it'll show my district, but um, it'll say require sign in with district account. So that means if you're outside of my district, you won't be able to see this um, presentation. You, you would have to sign in with something with your username that has my district, that is linked to my district. So come here, you're going to copy this link. You're gonna go here back to your classroom. So this is just a trial class that I use for um, making sure that everything works before I actually publish it to my um, real Google Classroom, my active and live Google Classroom. And I'm typing classroom as I talk. So I'm just gonna put welcome to Mrs. Heights class. And then I'm gonna add a link, copy V or command V, I'm sorry, add link and then post. Now typically this right here would show a preview of the website or the assignment. I think because it is requiring a sign-in that that is why I need to investigate this a little bit more. If I figure out um, a reason why it's doing that, I'll update you guys and let you know. But um, let me go ahead and click out of these so you can see. So now what's gonna happen is this is going to open that same Google slide as a pretty much a web page. And so now the students can go in and they can click things. The video. They can click things and they don't have you don't have to worry about them rearranging things because nothing is going to be able to be moved. So it doesn't matter how bad I click and drag, I can't move anything. Okay, so that's it. That's that workaround, and I hope that was 
easy for you guys to follow. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Share this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Sure. So like I said, some of that might have been a review, or maybe it made you think of something a little bit differently. Um, that published to the web. I also did that in the tutorial that I sent out this morning on how to get your link to your landing page to me. Um, so it might be something that you're like, hang on, like I'm hearing this a lot lately. It's just an easier way to be able to share a Google slide that you don't want the kids to be able to see all of the tools around it. It makes it a very clean presentation. So let's see, I am going to, I do here? Why am I not able to click on my page? Oh, I'm having one of those days I can see. Let's, oh, there we go. All right. So I've moved to the modern teacher platform. Are there any questions before I keep going? I have some in the chat. Yeah, go ahead. Do you want to read it out? Or do you want to turn your sound on? <laughs> All right, I still can't hear you in the chat or in the, um, yeah. No, I, oh, Andy, now I just heard you. It's Mary Russell. Yes. It is. You can hear me? Hear me now? No. Yep. Yep, I can hear you now, Meg. Do I need to read it again? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. How do you add a link? so that kids can have their own copy of a slide or document to work on and turn in without being able to see the other's work or change your original? Okay, that's a great question. And Meg showed that to me while you guys were watching the video. So I used my phone and I did some Googling. I did tell someone how to do it this morning, but basically what I told them to do was Google it. So I Googled it and I'm gonna put it into your chat. So hang on one second, let me open the chat. And I'm going to open up, I texted it to myself, so let me move all your cute little faces out of my way and open up my text to myself. So it basically, the secret is to change the original link that comes with your Google Doc or comes with your Google Slides. And so there are a couple of ways to do that. Actually, there's really only one way to do it. So what you're doing is you are taking that whole link that comes with your Google Slides and where at the end of it, it says um, edit, you wanna erase basically the word edit and anything that comes after it and replace it with the word copy and then share that link. And when you do, it forces the user to make their own copy. So let me put the link to the video here oops wait a minute i want to make sure it's going to everybody everyone in meeting here's the link to the video and and no it just put in the title let me do this copy but the title isn't going to help you there it is Here's that, and then here is, we have another question, Susie. Go for it. Will we send you our new landing page each week, or does it automatically change it on the MPS web website as we edit? Okay, that's a great question. I ended up having to hit reply all and send out a second response to everybody because I felt bad. I forgot to tell you that A, it doesn't have to be finished yet. B, as you make changes, whether it's changes later today or changes in two months, it will automatically update it. What you're doing when you send me that link is we're building the bridge between your site and the Mashpee site, and any updates that you make will automatically show up. So you don't have to worry about saying to me, hey, you know, I added, you know, a picture. Can you update my site? It will all happen automatically. Oh my goodness, and my phone's ringing and everything. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's see, there's one more um, image that I'll share. I'll figure out a way to share it, probably in the text in the document, just so that you have the text instructions on how to make a copy. So I'll make sure I have that in there as well. Any other questions? No.
how do you make everything non-movable? Mm -hmm. So I think it was, it was one of the Google slide presentations or Google slide classes that I did last week that talked about how to make a master slide. And then I also made a video on how to make a master slide. If you create a master slide, then it all becomes part of the background. If it has links in it, it's still linkable, it's still interactive, but the kids can't mess around with it or move anything around. So going back into the documents for Google slide courses last week, you'll find it. I think it's under, I think it's under Google slides for learning. Okay. Any other questions before I keep going? Let me close this, close this. Okay. So you guys are in the effective virtual learning um, segment with uh, these three courses. And for this one, it's the architect and online classroom space. I know that you have to make your way through all of these. They give you videos to watch. They give you resources to check out. You can look at other people's landing pages. I believe there's templates in there that you can choose from. And as you're going along, you're checking the little box that you did it. Some of the things have nothing in it just because the nature of this program is um, customizable. So districts can put their own stuff up there if they want to. But um, so some of them you're gonna open and there's nothing to do. And then when you get ready to share your landing page, you have to go down to the fluency part, basically showing that not only do you know about some you're literate about that topic, but you're also fluent in your ability to do what you learned in the literacy part. So you go down to the fluency part, and when you go here, you're clicking on online classroom space, and it opens it up in a new window. You have a couple more resources if you want to be able to check those out, but then you can type something if you want to in your comment. You don't have to, and you go to add attachment. There are two ways to be able to share what you're doing. You're either adding a file, but for I'd say 90% of you, chances are you're gonna be doing add a link. Well, that means you need the link. So first you really have to be at your site or at your Google Doc or at your Google Slideshow and you have to grab that link first. So let's say the link I'm gonna be sharing is this one. No, doesn't matter, this one. I would make sure that I've gone up to share. And right now it's private to only me, so that would be useless to share with them. So I would wanna make sure that I change my link to anyone with the link, just in case um, the people at Modern Teacher don't have a master account. And then I can go ahead and I can copy that link here from my slideshow or from my Google Doc or from my Google site, wherever it is, you wanna make sure that you've changed your permission so people can see it. And then you can go to Modern Teacher and then you can do click to add link. And it's, it kind of spaces it out. So title would be my landing page or landing page or my awesome landing page and then the url would be that link you just copied so i will control v and vomit that in there and then if i want to put in a description i can but literally i don't feel like there's anything else i have to say unless i want to say oh i had trouble with this or i'm still working on this part whatever it is that you want to put in there and then you hit select and actually i should go back here I don't know if it's gonna still be there or not. Down here, when you hit select, you wanna make sure that at least our district can see it, but a lot of the people that were in the course did do all districts, so you could all see it. And then you would hit select, and it would show up here, I just messed up, and then you would hit save. So that will save your work into the Modern Teacher platform, and then a notification comes up that you've done that particular assignment. And then you wanna make sure that the green check is done here. So we can't tell that you've done it unless you've hit complete and then you've hit save. You're not gonna get your little badgy things. Let me go back um, to Modern Teacher PL. You're not gonna end up getting your little badgy things until everything is checked off in green. That's when all of these things up here turn color. Questions so far? Susie, we have a question. Sure. 
do we send our landing page to you when we're done with it or upload it to the modern teacher site? Um, you do both actually. Now for a week I've said, don't send it to me, but I just sent out an email that has a Google doc that you'll go into and you'll send me a link to your landing page. There's also a tutorial that shows you how to do that like what link to send to me. So it's not a very long tutorial, but that's in the email as well. Um, I just sent that out to send. Um, it is time is the actual email title. So this is a link to the landing site. So you can go in and make sure that your button is there and it looks the way you want it to, or if it's missing, or if it's not looking the way you want it to, here's what you can do about that. Cause I might've lost it or you might not have done it yet. Down here, the YouTube link, this is the tutorial I made this morning showing you how to share the, or how to grab that link that you'll share with me. And then this is the Google form, which I believe I already have open on another thing. But this is the Google form that you'll fill out to share your landing page with me. So did you check the landing page for your button? Where did you create your landing page? Here's a link to your landing page. And then if you have questions or comments or anything, you can throw that in there as well. So that's where you're putting it, as well as up into the Modern Teacher platform, which shows that you've completed that, that mission, so to speak. Good question. The next question was just where the cricket is, but it's here in the library. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's good to know. Okay. Is there, um, I know that I've had people ask about how to create links to be able to link your stuff out to other things or to link within your Google document um, or within your Google slide or within your Google site, whatever it is that you're using. If you're using Google Docs, which I know that was what was suggested in Modern Teacher, it can be tricky to do the actual design because Google Docs is not designed to be like a desktop publisher or a design tool. So when you're trying to move pictures around, it might bump the text a little bit or you can't get the text exactly where you want it next to or under or beside or um, over your pictures. It can be frustrating. And I know that they had you work, I believe, in either three columns or in a table that had three columns, which does make it easier to do design in Google Docs, but I still don't find it to be easy. Um, I find that Google Slides is a lot easier to do that design. I have helped a few of you move your stuff over from Google Docs to Google Slides when what you wanted to do was not working. Um, so if you're having trouble, you can ask here, because I know you won't be the only one who's having trouble, or you can reach out to me just to be able to, to do that. Um, okay. um, and I'm, and I'm, I don't have a lot else. I know that like if we, um, played a game as to every time you heard the word landing page over the last week and a half, it would be a game that had a high score. It's been very much talked about and everybody's working on them and um, learning a lot of new skills in the process. I will say that I've been talking to a few people, Meg and I were talking earlier because we took the modern teacher course over the summer. It's challenging and it kind of just assumes that you have a certain baseline for skills when it comes to technology. So if your skills are like Swiss cheese and you're like, yes, I can do this, but woo, I've never done that before. Um, it's, it's challenging. So I don't want you to think that it was easy for all of us and that now it's just hard for you. It's, it was a challenge for everybody. So um, pat yourself on the back if you are making your way through the course and figuring out how to get all that to work. I am going to... I'm trying to think of what else I can show you. I used Google Sites for my landing page. Um, I have like 17 different tabs open, but if I go to sites.google.com, and this is the Mashpee District landing page that I shared with everybody in that email, where you're going into your school to figure out what it is that 
you know, that your button's in there and it looks the way you want. I've put my landing page on every school website. And so when I scroll down to the bottom, you'll see technology support, which gives them a link to Holly and Sean and I. I actually should get one of Jack, who is our newest part-time helper, thank goodness. But here's mine. Oops, no, I wanna click on the little girl. There it is. So I created mine as a Google site and it's still under construction. So being able to put in frequently asked questions because I do get a lot of the same questions that probably would be helpful to others. Um, if people are having trouble with usernames and passwords, they can come here or any tutorials. So I'll be putting a link probably to most of the tutorials that I've created or the, the um, classes that we've recorded. So it doesn't have a ton of stuff on it. I tried to keep it simple. The more complex it is, the more that I feel like I have to make it perfect. And so simpler was better for me. It was just a get her done type of thing. I love using the little um, emojis, not emojis, what do you call them? Yeah, they're emojis. I think I've shown this in another class that um, the Emojipedia is a great source to be able to find those. So if I'm looking for a clock, look it up. It shows you all the different kinds. Let's say I like the alarm clock, which I'm a fan of, then I can copy it and then I can use it in my whatever, my Google Doc, my Google Slide, my Google Site. So I've been having fun with those. How are we doing with questions? We're good. All right, well that's easy. Um, I'm gonna put out a request again. If you have anything that you wanna share with your fellow Mashpee people, um, I'm trying to do like a 10 minute commercial each day on something new that you've shared. And so today I only have one booked and it's for the afternoon, but I'm excited that that person reached out. I have one for tomorrow and that's it. So I'd love for you guys to be able to reach out and say something that you want to share. And if you're sitting there thinking, hmm, I don't think people want to know this or everybody must already know this. I don't want you to think that at all because you never know. Even if they've heard whatever you're sharing, it still might spark a new idea. And if you've already lost the link to sign up, then just email me. All right. I got nothing else, people. This is your chance to ask questions or if you wanna be able to share a link to your landing page and ask a question about that, you can do that. Um, it is 10.37, so usually I stop at 10.40 to do a Q&A for 10 minutes and then I stop for the 10 minutes. Well, it would be for a commercial, but we don't have one. Um, but what I'll do is I'll stay here for the next 20 minutes. I probably won't do anything more amazing with the landing page. But if you have questions about Modern Teacher or you have questions about your landing page specifically or um, anything, you can ask. And then the next two sessions, the next one is about playlists and the one at one o'clock is about advanced and intermediate learning plans. And then at two o'clock today, we have your Sean Maroney going over PowerSchool for Quashnet and KCC. So that's our line up ahead. And I have nothing else for you. I'm gonna hit stop share. And then I'm going to hit stop recording. <laughs>